Last but no means least, uh, Matteo is going to uh, come up and talk to us about how we can really like capitalize on all that hard work we've put into being creative and making that game and uh, how to get the best global launch for your product. So over to him. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Mateo and I invest in early stage tech and games companies at uh, Initial Capital. Initial Capital uh, invests in, in, invest in several games at early stage, including Supercell and Space Ape and, and several others. And we, we want, when we invest, we want to also add value and, and try to help the team throughout the first launch and, and to grow. So we, we, we definitely partner with, with, the, with the, the, the developers and entrepreneurs to help them grow. And before joining Initial Capital, uh, I was working at, uh, at Google Play, and I was leading the, the games team for, for Google Play. And uh, as part of that, I, I was working with a lot of developers, some big ones, including Space Ape, and some uh, startups. And so I helped them, I, I, I talked with them as they were thinking about launching and after the launch, and, and in some cases, we, we managed to feature them on the store. And, and so I, I went through that uh, conversation several times with them, and uh, and hopefully today I can I can bring some of the learnings in both experiences. So now at, at Initial Capital and at Google Play to you as as things that you should think about when you when you plan your launch. And really, it's not rocket science, but the key concept here is that is that when you when you launch, you shouldn't think about launching like pushing a button. You you, you go in a room, you build your game, it's great, and then okay, let's launch it and let's see what happens you should actually build the launch like you build your product. It should be a machine that that button activates that you have planned way, way back when you were planning, when you were developing the game. And that machine is, is actually a platform that connects all the important pieces of your, uh, uh, of your launch strategy. And I think the most important ones are here. So the beta community, uh, the influencers, and the app stores. So I'm going to talk about each one of these and how you should think about um, having, uh, in, in interacting with them, especially considering them as partners and not just uh, in, in just moving from this transactional relationship, uh, like client to supplier that you could have with influencers or with your user users or even with app stores, and, and just try to think about what are their goals and how you can. Kind of match them and, and, and partner together so that they are incentivized to work with you and help you. But before doing that, I think the first, the most important thing as you plan your launch is to really understand the market you're going for. Um, that will help um, inform how, how, what beta community you go for, uh, what influencers you work with, and also when you discuss uh, your, your, your uh, game with, uh, with uh, app stores, you already know what you're doing, and you can uh, really uh, you can use this uh, information to convince them that this is uh, it's going to be a successful game. So uh, this is a, a tool that you can use to do that. It's, it's called Store Maven. Uh, probably some of you might know it, but um, basically what this allows you to do is to test a concept of a game even before you have it, even if you, even something is available. So you can build audiences. You can run basically an ad campaign. Um, Let's say on Facebook, you can build different uh, interest groups and have different banners that you show to each, each of them. And when they click on that ad, uh, they will land on a fake uh, store page. Um, that way, they, they, they start interacting on that page, and then some of them will try to install the game. And if the game is not available, uh, they'll see uh, either a survey, so they can, fill, um, you know, they can answer some questions, or just give you the email and you'll reach out when, when the game is ready. Uh, what this gives you is very in important uh, information about the interest that that specific concept that you're testing, those that art style, is uh, is actually uh, doing um, that is generating with with different audiences. So you understand that you know for a given group, that specific concept is actually much more compelling than for any other group. So that's that's the audience you want to start. Uh, with as you plan your launch, and that's the, the that's the core of what you should also consider as you're building the game. Uh, you see all the stats you get from Store Maven, so you you can see how how much time people spend interacting with with all the assets on on the store page, how much if they scroll uh, the, the gallery, if they play the video, and of course if they try to install the game. So this gives you a, a lot. Um, 
some, some insights even before you have a game up there. But yeah, so that's uh, something, I think that's some homework that you should probably try to do as soon as possible. But once you have the game um, and you're ready to put it out there to, the, to soft launch it basically to, in, to a beta community, uh, I think uh, there's some, some best practices that, uh, that are uh, very interesting. And, and I think that the, 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 the main, uh, the best case I have here is, is BravoCo. I don't know if you've heard of them. Uh, they're, they're, they're one of our investments. They, they're building this game called, Force, called Forces of Freedom. It's an amazing game. It's on Google Play. Uh, check it out. Uh, but uh, what they're doing here is is fairly new game for mobile. So it's a tactical shooter, first person, um, and it's really and it's three v three. Uh, it, it's it's quite uh, high end graphics. So it's lots of stuff that has never been tried uh, on, on on mobile successfully. And so they wanted to really make sure that this would resonate with people. So after prototyping internally. They decided to, 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 to put it in the hands of, of players as soon as possible. And what they did, they created what they call the minimum awesome product. Uh, so they, struck, they just focused on the core, the very core mechanic. They didn't build any monetization, any meta, uh, any, any other character except one for each class and one map. And they put it out there um, for people to play it. Um, Long-term retention probably doesn't doesn't matter here. It's it's more about is it interesting for people to download it and play it for for a while? Is it how much uh, is this core mechanic work on mobile? And so they put it on, on on beta on Google Play and they got featured in Google Play early access, which is an editorial collection that showcases only beta games. Um, you can su submit, you can apply it online, or if you know someone at Google Play, you can, you can ask for that. Uh, but the response was great. They started having, a, you know, people started installing and playing the game quite a lot. And what they started doing with that community is in, interacting with them in a very, um, uh, in a content-based way. But basically, they asked them a lot of questions about, do you like this? Do you, do you want us to change that? What do you think about this? Should we change the logo to that or that? And and that created a lot of engagement. Um, so. What they managed to do with that is not only, of course, building a IP awareness and, and, and uh, use, establishing a user base on, on Google Play. Uh, I mean, after launching, they managed to reach seven, 7 million installs with no marketing whatsoever and with great ratings. But well, more importantly, I think at this stage, they, they managed to, to have a bunch of uh, of co-developers in the user in the user community because these guys were very passionate about the game and they were sending very detailed feedback and they managed and they made sure that they would consider that feedback in any iteration of the game. Uh, another important thing, of course, is they have now a very highly a very highly engaged community uh, that does anything on Facebook, including uh, memes and creating clans, and they also have um, they're creating merchandise and this. By the way, this is not launched yet. This is a game that has not been fully launched and there's no marketing yet and there's still 7 million people downloaded it, communities are built around it, and lots of feedback has been already incorporated in the game. Uh, it's not that easy. Uh, some, some learnings from, from what they did I think that are very important is don't focus on adding too many levels, too many features, too many uh, characters but focus on some of the features that are actually very relevant if your game scales. And, and to our localization, uh, make sure that you localize early uh, so that you can, if the game gets viral at this stage, you, you, you can get access to more people. Uh, and even more importantly, have tools in place to prevent hacking and fraud from day one. Um, instead of building an, another character, another map, uh, build this first. And because they had some bad bad moments when they realized that millions of players were playing that their you know, small game, they didn't think about all this stuff, and, and, and so you want to think about that before you actually put it out there. And, um, and also, try to think about ways to scale communication. Uh, personal interaction is great, it works at the beginning when you have a few hundreds or a few thousand uh, player, players, but when you have millions, you want to have other tools, so chatbots, uh, volunteers, self-serving communities, they, they tried all of that and, and, and definitely it helps um, scaling. So that's, uh, uh, I think, the best example of how you work with a better community to improve your game but also to actually have something when you launch 
that you can rely on. Um, but then the other part of the, of the equation is influencers. And, and here, uh, everyone you know, talks about influencers these days, and, and it's quite, um, it's, uh, quite a buzzword, and, and uh, as a result, it's also quite expensive to work with some of them. Um, but the other important thing here, and I'm stealing this stuff from Space Ape, actually. They, they're a master at this. Uh, and um, the, the important thing here is that you, non, you don't normally get what you pay for, uh, because really what influencers are about is something that is not, is genuine. It's not something you just pay for. Otherwise, it would be just an ad. right? And people get it. Users understand that when it's not genuine. So. In order to, to have the best result, the, 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 the influencers really need to be involved and incentivized to work with you. Uh, and I think the most important thing for them, regardless of their size, is, is subscribers. Beyond money, what they really care about is their audience, because that's how they build their success. And if they think that your game is going to bring them more subscribers or more happy subscribers, they're going to work with you. Some ways to do that is, is definitely making sure that um, they feel part of your team, that they have all the information that, that about your roadmap and what you're trying to do, and that they can give you feedback and that you actually take that feedback into consideration. I think uh, when they feel that, they, it's, it's easier for them to buy into your vision. And if they don't, then probably it's better not to work with them, but at least there's that exchange of information. Um, also, creating exclusive content for them to use with their uh, audience, of course, uh, will, will make their life easier and actually uh, give them something, uh, something special for their, for, to, to, to uh, drive more subscribers. And in, in order to make it easier, also making it easier for them to make videos by giving them assets, clips, or whatever they need to produce better content. Uh, don't forget some of these guys are just starting uh, even if they have a large audience, they don't have many. You know, they don't have a huge capacity in terms of video production. So anything you can do to make it easier for them, it's gonna pay off. And really, the best example here is Fastlane. Um, so again, I'm stealing this from 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 Miki and, and the team at, at Space Ape. Uh, but um, I think it's it's a good example. Even if, of course, at, this is at space ape scale, but I think it can be replicated um, at any scale. Uh, the learnings are, I think, are applicable everywhere. What they did for the launch, if you don't know, uh, they worked with uh, up to 21 influencers uh, for a total of 20, 50 million subscribers, and um, they created characters in the game for each one of the influencers, so that was was looking exactly like. Uh, each one of them, and uh, they created events around it uh, with all of them at launch, and then for the full, following weeks after the, the launch, uh, with some of them uh, at different times. So they not only they supported the launch with this strategy, but also the post-launch um, uh, growth, and and this really paid off. Uh, they they got uh, 12, 12 million views. Um, hundreds of thousands of, of tracked installs, and, and this was the second biggest marketing channel for them, um, even if they spent much less than, than the first one. And, um, uh, and, and uh, as I said, on top of that, they also got content for the following months uh, because of the characters and the event they created. Um, so yeah, that's, that's influencers. But then the last thing I want to cover is working with, with stores. And again, this has come comes more from my past. Um, I'm just big caveat. I'm not. I'm not talking for Google. Don't expect this to be the the, the truth uh, with everyone you speak to. Uh, this was me, and and some of the things I know are important from a store perspective. But um, yeah, big disclaimer here. Um, so as I mentioned, the important thing is to consider the store as everyone else in this, um, you know, uh, uh, like influencers and like uh, the, the user, uh, the better community, as partners. And so instead of just going there and pitch and, and try to, to and hope for the best, really try to understand what the, the store manager or the person that you talk to is looking for and try to highlight that into what you're telling that person. And I'm going to go through each. So these are the things I think are very important um, uh, to consider. And I'm going to go through each one of them. And um, hopefully, your game will have will cover one of these or even more. And so focus on them. Uh, but the other important thing I want to I want to mention here is that you should make sure that from day one you establish a two-way conversation. 
I, I was working with Space Ape and I learned a lot by doing that because they shared a lot of information with me and that's true also with all the partners that I work with. Um, so as much as you can provide them with data, insights, um, even just your product, the way you think about product, the roadmap and the live ops, um, and any feedback about the platform, how, you, how they can convince product managers, product managers uh, to, to improve the platform will be gold for them and they re and I think uh, it just changes the way uh, the relationship is built from just you pitching to exchanging ideas. Um, the, I think there's this uh, misconception that stores know everything and they have access to all the data in the world. It's partly true, that it's a lot of knowledge that they have access to but a lot of what they know <laughs> comes from talking with, with developers. And so if you can be one of them, uh, it, it, it helps. But let me go through each one of these uh, areas that I think are very important from a store perspective. So user onboarding, what I mean by that? Um, there are billions of people that visit uh, app stores every day and they're very diverse, right? And in, in a way, they're looking for something different and what the store cares about the most is giving them something new that they have never tried before to graduate them to a level of engagement or monetization that is higher than before. That's, that's a very important uh, step in, in the user journey from a store perspective because, because it, it, it ends up having, uh, creating more valuable users. So in, there are different ways you can uh, think about onboarding and they're all relevant. So, you can think about how your game can, can onboard users in different ways here, and these are some examples. This is uh, Reigns, I don't know if you, raise your hand if you know this game, it's pretty popular. Uh, this game also won uh, the Google Play Indie Games Festival earlier this year. I, I organized that event, the, the, the final was in London, and the reason I think it won over any other game not only it's it's one of the most beautiful games created by an indie developer, this was created by one person only, but it's it's so easy to pick up. You don't have to have ever played any game. The uh, mechanics, you know, it's one hand, it's portrait mode, and you just, it's Tinder basically, but it's a game, right? And so, but it, when you start playing, then the depth of the game and, and, and the experience that you have, is, it's really amazing. So. This is what makes it stand out from any other beautiful indie game. It's just uh, it's just perfect for onboarding new players that have never played a game. This is what it is to play a mobile game. Uh, another uh, concept of onboarding you can think of is what is going to be the first game a PC and console gamer is going to play on mobile. There are lots of players that actually play games and are very hardcore, but not they don't touch mobile games. They don't think it's 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 good enough experience for them, right? And this is another finalist at, at uh, the event I was mentioning before. It is called Battle for Polytopia, and it's basically civilization on mobile. But it's not just a port. It, it's a perfect mobile game that gives you the experience of civilization, but in a mobile format. And and this can you know if you played civilization or if you like strategy games, uh, turn-based games on on quick PC. Try this, and you, you see can, you can have that experience on mobile. Another one is how you convince players to make their first purchase in a game. Uh, and again, fast lane is a good example. Uh, you have um, you have a very uh, appealing and, and casual experience, and you can play for free if you want forever. Uh, but there is a lot of depth in the meta, and um, and the monetization mechanics are, are quite um, are quite uh, uh, effective. So. This, you know, from a store perspective, this could be the first time someone puts a credit card in and, and decides to make a purchase in a game. And if that, if your game is very effective at that, then you should align it. But again, you can think about other cases as well. Like, what is going to be the first game? Mo, mo, what is going to be the first live multiplayer game a player's play? Or what is it going to be the first game that will push someone to to post a video? So any. Any game that uh, kind of uh, graduates that, that player to the next level is interesting from a store perspective. Uh, now, the other part, of course, is sustainable revenues. Um, you know, uh, stores take a rev share, and so they, they are kind of partnering with you in, in revenue. So if they can see potential, it's definitely an important part. Uh, could vary between the you know, depending on who you talk to and the platform you talk to, but it's definitely an important piece. 
Um, and I think in this, in, in, you know, if, if that's your game, uh, and, and in a way, hopefully, everyone has revenue potential that they can uh, showcase. Uh, the way you want to do that is know, showing that you know what you're doing, basically. And the first thing is talking about the target, uh, the, your audience, how relevant and targeted it is. And the, the more it is, the, the more convincing your argument will be. This is an example of uh, Arch, uh, another one of our uh, investment. This game is Top Drives, and um, and it's this this alone uh, is is very interesting because it, it's a very uh, niche in a way audience uh, that loves cars and loves collecting uh, um, cards about cars. Uh, but it's a very uh, specific audience, and it's highly monetizable. So um, it's 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 very um, so it's something to highlight in a, in a conversation with a store. Uh, of course, live ops and events. Um, if you have planned them, um, show show what you're doing. Uh, that it's not just about the featuring and, and hoping for the best. It, you have a plan to to reengage users and monetize them. And of course, KPIs. Any KPI you have from from soft launching that show potential will be very uh, relevant in this conversation. Um, okay, and then another one is trends and content diversity. So the store needs to be relevant for everyone, and it needs to capture the innovation and the, the cool stuff that is happening in the game space. Uh, and I think, um, you know, if you can think about other trends or other categories beyond these, but these are, from my experience right now, some of the most important, in a way, the, the ones that will make your game stand out. If if you fall in any of these category, the first one is of course live multiplayer, and one we one versus one multiplayer is is now kind of kind of mass market and still growing. So that's great if you're doing that. But if you're trying to go to the next level, there I think it's it's actually even more interesting. So you you know you see how things like battle royale player down and is kind of becoming very relevant on PC, but also. You, you start to see that happening on, on, on the mobile. Even Agar.io is a kind of a, if you think about it, in a way similar to that. Uh, and of course, MOBA um, is happening on, on mobile as well. And, uh, and, and so all of this, or any variation of that, is very interesting um, because it, it, it adds diversity to the games you find in the store. And again, the store cares about diversity a lot. Um, the other part of this is uh, the audience you're targeting. If you're targeting female audience specifically, um, there's lots uh, of them uh, uh, visiting the store every day, and there's not many games targeting them. So if your game does that, make sure you highlight that and why, because it is an underserved category on, on both app stores. So very important. And uh, again, of course, the convergence of virtual and real worlds is it's something that is with us after Pokemon Go, and it's not going away. So, um, if you're building something that does that with, through geotagging or AR or any technology, I think it's it's a very it's very hot right now, and uh, it's worth uh, having a conversation with about it with uh, with the app stores. Uh, and of course, this is the last one. I think people already imagine this, and they don't think about the rest. But it's still relevant. Uh, stores will care about you more if you're adopting the technology behind the platform. And so on one side, of course, you have the operating system, the latest and greatest, and, and also dev tools. Uh, and, uh, and if you um, also use other platforms, side platforms beyond mobile uh, <laughs> store, like mobile operating system and, and store, but you, you know, things like AR or Daydream or VR or TV watches, um, all of that helps. Um, I think one, one piece of advice here is not to go beyond what you normally would do, just to convince them uh, to feature you. Uh, I think the other stuff is much more important because that's where you can find alignment with what, between what you're doing and what they care about. But anything that you have here will help for sure. Um, and I think also you want to make sure that you have an original use case that they can talk about with the, the rest of the community. So if you're using dev tools in a very creative way, Tell them about that, like how you're using the data analytics platform or whatever to change uh, your game in, in a way that is more uh, effective, or something that gives them uh, the idea of uh, something that uh, some knowledge can be shared with the rest of the community. So 
that's uh, that's uh, for uh, for App Store. So just to recap, uh, I I think the the key concept here is you don't just show up after you build the game and, and, and put it, uh, pitch it to some app store, hope to be featured, put it out there and, and, and pray. That, you can still have success with that, but I think you should, the, the same care you put into building the game, you should, you should put in building the launch. And you do that by working with these people and understanding what they care about and try to match what you care about and hopefully that you'll partner together and you'll have much better chances to, to succeed as, as you launch. That's it. Thank you.